all of your faces today. Uh, as you know, those of, that are members here, many of our group is are up at uh, MCYC uh, for a family camping weekend, and uh, I'm sure they're having a great worship service up there. But we certainly miss them here, don't we? And uh, we're thankful for your presence, thankful that you came out on this holiday weekend when lots of people are out of town and traveling and doing all kinds of good and fun things. And we come, as has been mentioned, tomorrow is Memorial Day. It's a day when typically people are supposed to rest. I mean, we have several holidays like that. The next one coming up will be the 4th of July where people again supposedly take off from work, but we know that some continue to work during this time. It's the kind of world we live in. But we take this day, uh, this Memorial Day, is supposed to be a day of remembrance of the people who have given lives to, in service to our country. Uh, there, as Diane mentioned, the Civil War was the event that sort of originated this holiday. And one of the amazing facts is that more people died during the Civil War than all the other wars America's fought in the last, since its beginning. Uh, there are more people died. And at least up until recently, I, I, it may have changed now. There may have been an equal number now, but the point is a lot of people died in the Civil War and it was a terrible event. And it was something to be remembered. And people wanted to remember and to honor those that did die. And so we, we rest to remember. We rest on the 4th of July to remember our independence. We rest at Thanksgiving in order to give thanks. And then we come to this passage that we read just a few moments ago. We're fairly familiar with it because it's part of the Ten Commandments. And in that, God commands Israel to rest, to Sabbath. The, the Hebrew word, Sabbat, is an interesting one, but it basically means to cease. God ceased from his labor in creation. And the first giving of the Ten Commandments back in Exodus was it, uh, the Sabbath was tied to the event of creation that God created in six days and then on the seventh day rested. He ceased from his creation. And then when we come now to this passage here in Deuteronomy, we find that, again, the command is to remember the Sabbath day, keep it holy, and all the commands that, that God puts with it. But here it is tied not to the creation, but to the fact that they were slaves in Egypt and that God had released them and, and given them freedom and brought them out by a mighty hand and was leading them through the wilderness and after 40 years of this wilderness wandering, they are now standing on the edges of the Jordan River. And, Abraham, and Moses is not going to go with them any further. He's going to die. And Joshua is going to lead them into the land. But he's giving this long sermon in Deuteronomy to remind them of all the things that God has done and all the things God has commanded them. He wants them to remember, remember what took place at Sinai, to remember what God is calling on them to be there, this unique people who are called to be a kingdom of priests. And so God talks about and has given them this, and he, Moses, is reminding them of the Sabbath. He repeats it, and, he, and in this he reminds them that they were slaves. Now, remember, this is 40 years past. Uh, the, all the people, who, all the adults who left out of Egypt have now died in the wilderness. It is their children and grandchildren that are the ones who are going to cross the Jordan and take possession of the land. Many of them have, don't remember the days of slavery in Egypt. They've only heard the stories. 
And yet God commands them to remember this event. Now, this was so central to the, the identity of the people of Israel that they had one special holiday, the, the Passover, that took place every year that was just dedicated to remembering the Exodus and, and the powerful hand of God that led them out of slavery. And so we come to Memorial Day remembering all the people who sacrificed in order to end slavery in this country. It took the sacrifice of over 600,000 to bring this event to be. And so we remember that, or at least hopefully we do. It seems like not many people do these days, it seems. But that's not entirely true. Many people do remember and honor them. And so Israel is standing on the border of the promised land, getting ready to go in. And God tells them that they are to keep the Sabbath. Every seventh day they are to rest. Why? Well, because they were slaves. See, the, the thing about slavery is that slaves never get a day off. They never get two weeks of vacation. They have no freedom. And part of the, the Sabbath remembrance was to remind them that they once were slaves, but now they are free and that they can rest. They can cease from their labor. Now, the Israel, Israel the Jewish people, took these commands uh, and all the Ten Commandments, but particularly the one right before this, not to misuse the name of God, and this one about the Sabbath. And they began to build traditions and things around them to protect them, sort of a fence around the command. And so... They wouldn't use the Lord's name in vain or uh, misuse it. They forbade anybody from even speaking the name of God. And so and even in the Old Testament, where you come across the word Lord, this is a, a euphemism. This is a, a word that is used in the place of the name of God because Israel was afraid. They didn't want to misuse the name. Now, we could spend a lot of time there, but then they also, but they also did the same thing with the Sabbath. They built around it all these traditions about how far you could walk in a day or the things you could do or you couldn't light a fire, but you could do certain other things. You could obviously release your animals to take them out to give them water. But, but still, they had all these traditions and they enforced them sometimes harshly with people and it made it very difficult for people to live. And so the Sabbath became in many ways more of a burden to people than a blessing. God wanted them to cease from labor to rest, but also so that he could spend time with them. When we go back to the creation, when God ceased from his creative time, and on the seventh day it says he ceased and he rested why did he do that? God wasn't tired. You know, God wasn't, you know, having in need of a break. Instead, God wanted to cease from that so that he could spend some time with these amazing creatures that he had created in his image, male and female. They were astounding. They were, they were unique. And God wanted to get to know them better, and he wanted them to get to know him also. And so we, we live in this world where Sabbath is, and in fact, you know, oftentimes we've talked about how that it's not a command for us as Christians and this type of thing. And yet God gave this to Israel to bless them in a particular way. It's interesting that we, sometimes we talk about fasting, but Fasting for, for, the, for the Jewish people was only one day a year. 
They had one fast day per year that was commanded. But they were commanded to rest every seventh day. Passover only came once a year, but every seventh day they rested to remember. To remember what God had done for them. To spend time. To get to know God. See, Sabbath was really about relationship. How do you get to know somebody? How do you build a relationship with people? You have to spend time with them, right? It's, it's one of those things that we just, we know this, and yet in our day and time, it seems more and more difficult for people to spend time with each other. And so we look at this and we, we come to understand that while this may not be a command for us in that sense, God is still wanting to call us to rest, calling us to cease from what we're doing in order that we can spend some time with him. As we're doing this morning, that's, I commend you. I commend you for being here today. Because this is about getting to know, hopefully, God a little better and each other. But it is this idea of pausing from activity. I mean, how many times have you heard someone say, I'm so busy, I don't have time to think. You ever said that? I can see some nods, that's, and I, I nod for myself also. We get so caught up in what we're doing and that we don't have time to even think or consider the things going on around us. And we work. We live in a hyperactive world. We live in a hyperactive society where we are defined by what we do. And so it is a compliment when we come to talk to somebody and we, we're, we say, well, I know you're busy, right? How often do we say that? How often do people say it to us? I know you're busy, but can you stop for just a moment for me? We, we look at busyness as a virtue, don't we? We, we look at it as something that's that we strive to do. We, we don't want to be idle. We don't want to have time where we're not busy. We're, because we get our significance out of what we do. Whatever that may be. And yet God has created us in such a way that he wanted us to rest with him. Uh, the, there's a lot of interesting things about those early chapters in Genesis. But, you know, the, the pattern in the first chapter is, you know, there was evening and morning the first day, the second day, the third day. But if you read it, there's no evening and morning on the seventh day. I think God just wanted to have a continued Sabbath, a continued ceasing so that he could spend time with his people people he had created. And so Sabbath is more than just a rest from activity. It's a time to build relationships, a relationship with God, but also with each other. You know, the, the time of rest and Sabbath was to be time spent together, and yet we live in a world that seems that that is even more and more difficult. So I, I, I want to kind of close the lesson with a few suggestions. Not commands, obviously, but suggestions for how we can enter into Sabbath. We can enter into rest. We can enter into this time where we build relationships. Okay, so the first thing is, first suggestion is radical. It's radical. And that is unplug. Amazingly enough, and I've got my phone right here, so don't don't think I'm 
trying to criticize. But, you know, we can turn these phones off. You realize that? It's got an off switch. You know, I mean, that, that it really is there. You know, we may not ever use it, but, but it's there. And, and when I say unplug, it's not just phones, though phones are a big one. But we, we often get in the, in the mode of saying, look, uh, you know, what, what, something could happen, right? Uh, I never used to carry a phone. I mean, I, I lived for decades without carrying a phone. I lived, what, lived 20 plus years in Africa without a phone, carrying it around in my pocket. And so when I had an emergency, I didn't have a phone to call people. Not that it would have worked anyway, but, you know, the, the point being is that we, we have, but now we're used to them, and we're afraid we're going to miss something. And so sometimes we keep the TV on because there might be some news. Sometimes the news is not something we really want to watch and hear. As was mentioned, what happened in Uvalde is something that will be remembered now with this holiday for many people. Just like 9-11 is a, is a date that's stuck in many of our minds because of the tragedy of that day. But, but here again, we, we come to a time, whether it be Uvalde or Buffalo or any of the other horrific killings that have taken place in our country in the last several years. We need to maybe say, take some time not just to remember, but pray. Pray for change. Pray for people to, to wake up. Because change is needed. There's no doubt about that. What that change is is always the debate. But we're paralyzed. And, and the thing is, we, we're so, everybody's rushing so much. There's little time to think and consider what that change might be. But we need to unplug. Things are going to, things, things will continue. You know, we, we believe, I, and I think this is one of the reasons for the Sabbath rest for Israel, was that they had to stop because the world didn't depend on them. Their survival didn't depend on them because God was their source. And so unplugging is a radical thing, but in one sense it's a small thing, turning off the TV, turning off the, and, and then taking that time to actually talk with the people who are around us. Uh, talk with our kids and our family and, and being together. I, I think another aspect of this, and this is another radical thing for us Americans, is that we need to seriously react, relax. And that's sort of an oxymoron, right? You know, But we need to relax. That is, if you stay home and, and are going to practice a day of Sabbath, then that means... You don't do your housework, you don't cut the grass, you don't weed the garden, uh, you don't fix the back door, or all the typical things that we typically do when we, quote, have a, quote, day off. We cease. We rest. Take a nap. Enjoy time with our kids. Maybe play a board game. Not a computer game, but a board game with our family. Uh, you know, when I uh, when I go to Ecuador to visit the Campbells and the Markhams, this is one of the things that you notice about those two families. They play board games all the time. They have their favorites. They like new ones, but they 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 play them because they play together as a family or as cousins or or whatever. I I, I would say. Eat simple meals. Eat leftovers instead of, you know, fixing a big, a big meal or that type of thing for our, our ladies. Spend some time talking with each other. And if that seems rather awkward, because in a lot of families it does seem rather awkward, well, 
Try and have some, have some questions that you can all discuss together. Maybe read the Bible together and talk about, well, what is, what do you hear when we read this particular story or this type of thing? Or asking questions, what would you do if you weren't afraid? Because most of the time we're, we're too afraid to do things. What would we do? Well, these are, these are the kinds of things that we could talk about. And then if you can't relax at home, and I know some people can't, then go away. Go to a park. Eat a sandwich, sit in the sun. You know, whatever it may be. Israel was called to remember. We remember too. Every Sunday, we do take communion because we are a people who are trying to instill in ourselves the story of Jesus, the story of God. For Israel, it was remembering that they had been slaves in Egypt. Maybe that's something we need to remember too, that we're not slaves to our jobs or to our to-do list or whatever it may be, but instead we are called to be a people in relationship with God, to love him, to get to know him. And maybe if we were quiet, if we had some quiet time when we didn't have a lot of business going on, we might even hear God speaking. As frightening as that may be to you, it's not a bad thing. And so today we are listening to this call. And I, I, as I was thinking about what to preach today, it was, you know, thinking about Memorial Day. But, but the idea that we remember is really much of what we are. We are all part of what God has done in our lives to this day, to this point. And so my encouragement to you is to find some Sabbath time. Find some, a day or a half a day or an hour where you cease and rest and listen to God and talk with your friends and family. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. So I say to you today, let's do this. If there's someone here who needs to make that commitment to Jesus, we certainly are open to that. We invite you to come to study with us, to, to put Christ on in baptism if, if that's where you are in your journey. But we ask you to, if you do need, let us know. Uh, let me know. I think I'm the only elder here today, but, uh, but I'm happy to talk with you. Happy to talk with you and, and as we continue on this journey together. Let's all stand while we sing.